Hello, and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, owner of Kathleen Lee Consulting, and I am your host for this program. Think Tech Hawaii is currently live streamed on thinktechhawaii.com, as well as on Think Tech Hawaii's Facebook and YouTube pages. And for viewers like you who are tuning in today, you could send us questions um, while we're on the show to questions at thinktechhawaii.com. For today, I am excited to introduce an individual who will be um, furthering the conversation about legalization of cannabis. Can't even say legalization, right? Sorry, Dr. Otto. <laughs> legalization of cannabis in Hawaii. We have Dr. Clifton Otto of, of Cannabis Healthcare Hawaii. He is a cannabinoid medical medicine specialist. I hope I got that right. Dr. Otto, welcome to the show. Well, thanks, Kathleen. I appreciate you inviting me. Absolutely, and thank you for reaching out to us as well. Uh, again, we're always about discourse and expanding conversation regarding legalization of marijuana. But before we go into that, uh, tell us a bit more about yourself, your professional background, as well as how you got into um, this space. Sure, so I am what you would call a cannabinoid medicine specialist. Uh, this is uh, something that I went on to get additional training after medical school, because we don't learn anything about medical uses of cannabis or endocannabinoid system in medical school. So I went on to do a CME training in cannabis medicine uh, and became certified by the American Academy of Cannabinoid Medicine to further my knowledge of, of how to best serve patients here in Hawaii. Uh, I've been practicing cannabinoid medicine since about 2013 and um, originally got into this whole topic around 2010 uh, because of a, a family friend who was undergoing uh, cancer therapy and turned to cannabis to help with his nausea and loss of appetite uh, that was, uh, in my opinion, really threatening his, his life and his recovery. So that was kind of my first experience I went on to do research on my own and was amazed at the amount of research that's been done on the medical uses of cannabis, especially back in the 70s, and then started researching the law and, and became a bit of an advocate. And, and that's when I started to get involved at the legislative level. Um, 2011 was the first year that um, I was able to uh, help with the bill. It got introduced by uh, Senator Sparrow. Uh, SB uh, 113, which was actually a cannabis research bill, which kind of reflected how naive I was at the time, uh, because I ran right up against uh, the federal issues and, and the federal conflict that we're uh, still uh, dealing with today. So uh, as a result of learning about the law and, and the position that our position, patients are in, uh, that's what really motivated me to become uh, a bit of an advocate uh, for our patients because of their current situation. Got it. And Dr. Otto, could you tell us a bit more about Cannabis Healthcare Hawaii and the Akamai Cannabis Clinic? Well, yes. Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, I, I've been working with the legislature since about 2011 and originally uh, did not want to do certifications with the program because I was afraid that this might stigmatize me as, as a pot doctor. And I wanted to be able to uh, approach our legislatures in a way that would be respected. And, and I soon realized that it didn't matter what I was doing. If I came to them talking about medical cannabis reform, the door was just getting slammed in my face. So after uh, a couple of years, uh, more and more patients started coming to me and saying, listen, my, my medical doctor will not talk to me about this. They will not certify me. Uh, cancer patients, uh, PTSD patients, chronic pain patients. And, and that's what really motivated me to, to take that step and uh, become a certifying provider, which, which is a very challenging position in Hawaii uh, because we are required to have a doctor-patient relationship with our patients, but we are not providing treatment. Uh, I tell my patients I cannot recommend the medical use of cannabis until there's an FDA-approved botanical substance available in our pharmacies. I certainly can't write prescriptions until then. And so, but I am able under state law to have a confidential doctor-patient relationship and to provide educational information for patients 
I approach this from a harm reduction point of view, trying to help patients uh, use cannabis as safely and effectively under their right to decide what happens to their bodies. And uh, patients are in desperate need of education on this subject. Uh, I'm afraid that even now a, a lot of providers uh, do not have the knowledge that our patients really need for ongoing supervision. So that's why I opened uh, originally uh, Cannabis Healthcare Hawaii to try and promote this idea that cannabis could be an integral part of sustainable healthcare here in Hawaii, and then uh, also adopted the name Akamai Cannabis Clinic to also further raise awareness about uh, uh, patients um, and their need to have a safe environment in which they can talk about medical cannabis and get uh, suggestions for products and dosages and have ongoing supervision. So that, that's how that all kind of evolved. Thank you, Dr. Otto. Um, I know you had mentioned, I think through our correspondence, that um, legalization of cannabis or marijuana is, is a bit more intricate than what it seems. Um, and I think the first question that I had thought of when you brought that up was, um, I know you are an advocate for usage of medical marijuana, but I, I would like to get your thoughts on legalization of recreational marijuana, which I think was where that conversation may have been going. That made you go, okay, I need to say something about this. Did I get that correctly? Sure. And um, through our communications, I was I was uh, trying to let you know that there, as you mentioned, there was, there's more depth to this than I think is really being discussed. And one thing I've been trying to promote is this authority of our state to decide how controlled substances are used within the state. That's what allowed us to create a medical cannabis program back in uh, 2000. Uh, and the problem is that we never went back to the Department of Justice or the DEA and said, hey guys, this is a constitutional authority reserved to the state. Uh, we have exercised this authority, but the problem is it's creating a conflict with the federal regulation of marijuana. Uh, which uh, has been impacting our patients for the past 21 years and is now impacting our dispensaries. And so that's where I think the discussion needs a little bit more of a different perspective because I believe that we need to protect this authority of states to decide how controlled substances are used within the state before we move on to a broader authorization such as recreational or, or adult use. Thanks, Dr. Otto. And, and, and you bring up a good point that I did not even think about. I know um, that was brought in the discussion in the last episode, um, whereas federal regulations definitely do affect patients. But for me, and, and maybe for some viewers out there as well, how, how would it affect patients who are currently using um, cannabis for medical use? Well, so right now, uh, you know, we talk of the cannabis industry, but in my mind, an industry requires uh, businesses that are legal and legitimate, both at the state and federal level. And that just isn't the case uh, across the entire nation. And so, as was discussed in the last episode, um, dispensaries are considered to be continuing criminal enterprises at the federal level, which means they are not able to deduct their uh, standard business expenses from their federal tax returns. And as was uh, described, that can result in a federal tax burden of up to 70%. Um, I, most legitimate businesses would not be able to operate at a 70% tax burden. And so this cost, at least some of it, is most likely being passed on to our patients. So our patients are being uh, made to burden or to carry this this burden of this ongoing federal conflict, which, means, which to me just seems the exact opposite of, of what should be happening to our patients. And so that's another reason why I, I have a little difficulty when we just talk about a in cannabis industry, because I think that, that focuses attention more on the business entities and, and what is best for them, and, and not necessarily focuses on our patients. And 
the discrimination that they are experiencing every day. I mean, I, I get calls almost on a weekly basis, basis from patients who are losing their job because they're failing a, a drug test that, that, you know, is meant to test for cannabis impairment at, at work, but it's tick, uh, picking up levels of THC in their urine that could be there for weeks. Parents are losing custody of their, their children because the, the judge is, is biased against any cannabis use. Um, and, and, and the one that, that, that I recently came across is uh, Native Hawaiians who are scared to death to grow their medical cannabis on Hawaiian homelands because they're being told that doing so would violate their lease agreement. And uh, you probably know how difficult it is to get Hawaii homeland leases. So our patients, uh, medical cannabis, native Hawaiian patients who want to be able to grow their own organically grown cannabis medicine for themselves are, are fearful to do so. And, you know, if, if, if nothing is going to make your blood boil uh, uh, than that, I, I just don't know what will. So these are the things that I'm encountering. And I, I feel that we need to address these issues first. And one way to do that is actually to stand up for this state's authority to decide how controlled substances are used within the state, which, which I believe would not only benefit patients, what, but would also benefit the dispensaries. Got it. Uh, Dr. Otto, we are going to go on break, but when we return, we will continue this discussion. So we'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Joshua Cooper and welcome to Cooper Union. We look at what's happening with human rights around the world, and we invite you to tune in every Tuesday where we feature the voices of the people from the front lines sharing the struggles for self-determination, for the importance of sustainability and solidarity with one another to make the world a better place for all of humanity. If you can't catch it live, you can also look at thinktechhawaii.com as well as on Vimeo, and many other places to catch the amazing shows where we hear from authors, activists, academics, analysts, and artists who are contributing to positive social change around the planet. Aloha Mekapono, thank you for joining us for Justice. Welcome back to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, and my guest for today is Dr. Clifton Otto. We are talking about the legal, legalization of cannabis in Hawaii. And Dr. Otto, um, at the first half of the show, brought up some points, uh, particularly from the patient perspective when it comes to legalization. So, Dr. Otto, can you expand more on that? But let me rephrase my question. I know. During the break, I had mentioned that it seems like you and and our guest on our last show seem to be on similar wavelengths when it comes to the idea of cannabis helping people out, especially when it comes to medical use. Where do the paths diverge when it comes to matters of um, opinion? Let's start with that. Well... So, yeah, I, I would agree that uh, ultimately we all should be in this for our patients. And perhaps part of the divergence is, is caused by the fact that um, that dispensaries, by their very nature, they're, they're uh, commercial enterprises. And so they need to think about the bottom line. And they've had a very difficult time. I mean, imagine all the application process they had to go through, the selection uh, the funds that they had to make available, and then to have to wait an entire year without even being able to open, and then you're, so you're paying your first renewal fee without even having opened your doors. On top of that, there's there's a regulatory structure that I think is very difficult, and um, and constantly changing, and so this puts the dispensaries under a lot of pressure, financial pressure, in addition. To the federal situation, 
um, a couple of years ago, uh, the state law was changed to allow outside investors to gain interest in the dispensaries. And I suspect this was done because uh, a lot of the original uh, investors just kind of got in over their heads. They didn't realize what was going to be required to get this up and running. Um, and the danger of that is that we could have uh, outside uh, investors and operators gaining uh, control of our dispensaries and uh, directing the narrative as well as uh, the commercial um, motivations, meaning uh, applying mainland uh, sales models to Hawaii that can put uh, unnecessary pressure on the dispensaries themselves and on the dispensary staff. Right now, about 37 to 38% of patients are currently using dispensaries. That also puts a lot of pressure on the dispensaries, but there's a reason for that. And that's because uh, patients want um, certain quality and certain involvement in the production of their own medicine that the dispensaries are, are not able to provide. Uh, and patients um, tell me that there is a, a, a real satisfaction that comes from being able to produce their own medicine. So um, I was uh, asked by Department of Health to be the uh, certifying physician on the original Hawaii Dispensary Task Force. And um, on that task force, uh, one of our recommendations, one of the things we talked about was creating a horizontal model for Hawaii's medical cannabis program, meaning that you had multiple cultivators and producers who could contribute to a central distribution system. And then the idea is to make a variety of locally made high quality products available to patients at, at the lowest cost possible. Unfortunately, that got changed uh, behind closed doors at the legislature and, and we now have eight vertically integrated models that the dispensaries themselves have recognized uh, is not sustainable. Uh, at the very least, they need to be able to exchange material with each other to help with production difficulties or losses of crops or um, demand uh, differences in demand between the islands. So uh, I think for the dispensaries, the idea of recreational legalization can appear to offer a solution because it allows for uh, a broader customer base and um, the ability to produce um, more product and, and uh, increase revenue, which will get them out of this hole. Um, but but I, I think, uh, as they realize, uh, the vertical model is not the correct model for Hawaii, especially in a state where we have some of the best sunlight in the world. And uh, we should be growing this outdoors. Plants should be in the ground make maximal use of the nutrients available in the soil and the uh, natural UV radiation that boosts uh, cannabinoid and terpene production, which is an integral part of the medicine. So I think perhaps that's where some of the divergence exists. How do we get to a place where the dispensaries are successful? Uh, I think the answer is focusing on medical use. I believe in the long run, the real potential, both for taking care of our patients and providing for uh, a, a commercial benefit across the community is to focus on medical use. Uh, and I'm, I'm talking about intrastate medical use where uh, we could be producing high quality, uh, even FDA quality mechanical drug products that are available only in Hawaii for sale and use in Hawaii. Um, I, I should point out that the original medical cannabis bill in 2019, uh, introduction, one of the paragraphs said uh, the intent is to make Hawaii an international uh, treatment and research center for cannabis. And I believe the way to realize that is through medical use. Now, the state could certainly authorize recreational use uh, if it wanted to, but waiting for the federal government to legalize this and, and put ourselves uh, at the mercy of federal guidelines and regulations that we're already seeing having neg negative impacts upon state hemp programs. I, I think that's, that's where the divergence is. Could you expand more on those hindrances? Well, so right now we have uh, the MORE Act uh, in Congress, moving through Congress. 
which would legalize um, cannabis. Take it off the Controlled Substance Act. But it also creates uh, a variety of federal, new federal agencies. It creates a national cannabis tax that would ramp up to 25% over three years. And it could potentially interfere with our state's ability to decide uh, how cannabis is produced within the state. I wish that Congress would just say it's up to the states to do what they want with cannabis. If they want to make it illegal, that's up for them. If they want to uh, authorize adult use, fine. If they want to just stick with medical use, that's up to the state. And as long as it stays within the state, that's none of our business. If it's going to start crossing state lines, then, of course, interstate commerce, the feds and the FDA would have to get involved. But I think we have a very unique opportunity in Hawaii because we are an island state. We can control our borders better than any other state. We could have uh, very high quality research and products produced within the state for strictly for medical use. And, and we are just at the beginning of understanding what uh, the medical potential of it is for cannabis. It is nothing like alcohol or tobacco, I can tell you that. This is a powerful medicine, and I believe we need to respect it as such. So on um, with you being in this space, what are the biggest challenges that you run into when it comes to educating people or delivering your message? Well, I, I think the biggest challenge is I'm, I'm kind of pretty much all on my own in the middle. Uh, on the one side are people who think that, that cannabis is, is evil. And on the other side, uh, folks who think that recreational legalization is the only answer. And I, I believe that by focusing on our patients and correcting the current difficulties they're having and ensure the dispensaries are open and patients have access, but the discrimination that they are facing uh, it's just unacceptable. And I have been trying to educate uh, on this topic however I can. And um, and I think uh, quite obviously from the last session, our legislature got it. Uh, for the first time in the existence of our medical cannabis program, we had uh, unanimous approval of a resolution in both chambers that asks the Department of Health to file a federal exemption with the DEA to exempt the, the state authorized use of cannabis in Hawaii from controlled substance regulation. So it would remove this conflict with the ongoing federal regulation of cannabis as a Schedule One controlled substance. Now, some people say that was just a resolution. It, it's not binding, but this was a significant event. And I really have to take my hat off to all of our state lawmakers because this is the first time they came together and said, this situation is unacceptable. Maybe we realize at this point that our governor is not in a position to stand up for our state's authority to decide how cannabis is used within the state. But we realize that this is something that is not helping our patients or our medical cannabis program. And we would like the Department of Health to do something about it. Um, so I, I, that's how I have been working to try and educate and try and move this issue forward because I think uh, all of us have a responsibility to help our patients. They are not in a position to help themselves. They need our help. Thanks, Dr. Otto. And so, I, again, your, your perspective is absolutely valued, and I appreciate you like shedding the light on that. Do you see a path somewhere down the line, whether it's like 10 or 15 or 20 years from now, for both um, medical and recreational cannabis to be legalized? And if so, like, what would well, that look like? Well, so, yeah, the, I think the feeling that a lot of us are getting is that recreational legalization is coming. And um, I hope that it's something it is not forced upon us. I hope it is something that we can decide as a state is the right thing for Hawaii. And uh, in the meantime, making sure that our patients and our medical pet program are protected. That's why it's so important to, to get on this now before there is uh, any uh, significant um, federal action. Because some states, when they... Uh, uh, legalized recreational use, they just kind of folded their medical program into the recreational program. And uh, products 
that are meant for adult use are not necessarily uh, good enough for our patients. You know, it's kind of uh, the difference between uh, home-brewed alcohol and medical quality, medical grade ethanol. They might require different standards uh, and different testing for contaminants. Um, but that being said, uh, cannabis is an agricultural product. And we have patients who have been using this uh, for decades in Hawaii, uh, patients who are masterful at cultivating their own cannabis uh, and producing products that is, doesn't seem to be harming anybody. So we have to be careful about finding a balance between protecting our patients and over-regulating uh, the, the production of cannabis and, and recognizing its, its use as an agricultural uh, medical uh, product. Um, I, I hope that we can move in that direction to expand uh, its production in an organic fashion, in a natural fashion that can produce the highest quality cannabis in Hawaii. Uh, which would definitely benefit our patients and, and would certainly benefit a adult use market if that's something that, that our state wants to pursue at some point. Dr. Otto, is there anything else that you would like to add in our last few minutes of our very educational talk today? Well, I, I would just like to encourage uh, people who uh, feel that something needs to be changed in this area, uh, encourage our patients uh, to first of all, thank the state lawmakers for um, adopting this resolution, HCR 132, last session, and encouraging them to, to take further action. You know, I, I believe our state lawmakers want to do the right thing, but they're hesitant to stick their necks out if patients are not willing to fight for what they believe in. So I would encourage people to take action and politely and persistently uh, pursue this with their state lawmakers. Wonderful. And if we can pull up um, the website for Cannabis Healthcare Hawaii, Dr. Clifton Otto, how may people get a hold of you if they want to learn more or if they just want to talk to you to continue this conversation? Yeah, they could just go to my website. I uh, have all my contact information there. Um, I answer uh, all my phone calls directly so you don't have to worry about getting uh, stuck with a receptionist and uh, maybe not getting called back for a couple of days. Please, please contact me. I'm happy to continue the discussion. Wonderful. Thank you again so much for joining us today. And I really appreciate you reaching out. Again, I love the discourse, when, especially when it comes to this, since I feel like it, it should be talked about more. So, Dr. Otto, thank you for coming today. Um, we also want to thank Jay Fidel and the entire staff at Think Tech Hawaii for making programs like this possible. Eric helped us out today, so thank you, Eric. And until next time, aloha.